Hey y'all, welcome to Between Us Foods. This is Donita. If you're new here, this is part two of the topic dance life balance. Part one, we discussed dance and dating and the fine line we sometimes have to make between dance life and other life. Check it out if you haven't in this episode. We are here back again with Richard and Kevin to talk about what our individual experience um, have been and what we've learned and kind of share positive perspectives and tips regarding it all. So between us foods, let's talk about it. Before we actually get into the discussion, um, just a disclaimer out there, like we're not at all experts at this topic. Um, sure, we have a lot of ex- life experiences and we want to share those, but you know, we're still struggling. We don't have our ish together yeah <laughs> so um take this take our advice with a grain of salt you know do what works for you um hopefully you take something out of this episode but again we are not at all experts <laughs> so it's whew. gonna be tough y'all it's gonna, it's gonna be, be tough, tough don't be you. hard on yourself because i know when we talk about this we might make it seem like we're making it su- look super easy but it's not mm-hmm. it's really not we're still struggling like you said yep so we're in it together. Woohoo! <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, let's story time. Let's let's talk about this one point of your life where you like just struggled to like do everything. <laughs> you mean my entire <laughs> life? <laughs> I'm like, uh, right now. <laughs> like all of our lives. Right now. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you have any stories um, to begin, Richard. Oh, all right. I will kick it off. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so a time I really, really struggled. Let's see. So. Um, just to give a bit of background, I went to school in LA, I went to UCLA, and I was studying, what was I studying? Electrical engineering there. Um, <laughs> I started dancing around that time, and I was always at an impasse about like, do I want dance or do I want school? And I just felt stuck because I felt like I wasn't good at either, not in the way that I wanted to be because I was trying to balance them. Mm-hmm. Um, it got to a point where my grades were really, really bad, and I actually got kicked out from school. Um, oh UCLA decided, we don't want you wow. anymore, you little, you know? Like, <laughs> So, yeah, that was a really tough time in my life because I was like, man, what do I do? You know, like I felt so lost, so like not sure where to go. And at the same time, I think it was really nice looking back just because what I ended up doing was I ended up taking a year to just dance. I didn't know why I wanted to do it. I didn't necessarily think it was going to be my career or anything, but I decided that, hey, if there's any point in time to really give it my all, now's the time. And I don't want to make it seem like I woke up the next day after getting kicked out of school and I immediately thought that. No, it was definitely a struggle (laughs) to reach that. Um, But that's what I ended up deciding. And I think it felt really good to kind of get that all out of my system. Not necessarily out of my system, but allowed me to actually chase it to how much I wanted to chase it. Because for once, I got to just dance almost as a living, I guess. What I will say is I was very fortunate. I um, was able to have financial support from parents, and I also had the support from friends as well who didn't make me feel like I was any less for doing what was not the normal path, I guess. So I had a lot of support in that sense. Eventually, I was able to decide for myself that I actually wanted to go back to school. And then from there, it kind of flip-flopped. I decided I didn't want to repeat the same mistakes I made before about trying to balance either. So when I went back to school, um, how it worked was in order to be readmitted, I have to go to school elsewhere for a little bit and then get readmitted to UCLA. Um, I flip-flopped. I decided to drop dance for, I figured it was like a year and a half. It wouldn't take long. Um, And I was like, I will give school my all because I gave dance my all. It is time. Um, During that time too, I worked I worked in retail, I worked maybe 30 to 4 hours a week. It was really tough, but it was worth it, I think, in the end. I managed to graduate, and now I have my big boy job while still (laughs) teaching, um, while still being able to dance at the same time. And I guess to say what I learned along the way is that it's a huge struggle kind of deviating from what society deems as the normal path because you are surrounded by people that are going that way and it seems like they're so successful why am i not and what i learned is that everyone has their own timeline everyone figures out what they want for themselves and just because you see people that graduated in four years have a full-time job now it doesn't mean they've figured it out for themselves either you could very much be happier than some other people because you took the extra time to take a little detour 
and understand for yourself why exactly you are doing the things you're doing, as opposed mm -hmm. to doing it because you believe society asks that of you. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I learned. I learned also support from friends is very important because mm -hmm. again, had they not made me feel like, my friends were very much supportive in the sense that like being kicked out of school, not pursuing a full-time job, even being financially supportive for a little bit by my parents. I was my friends never made me feel bad about that. And that was, I think, a very, like, very, very big help. And mm -hmm. I don't thank them enough. So thank you, friends. So shout out yeah. to Richard's friends. That's my story. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Kevin, you wanna go next? Okay. So the year was <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually do really remember this because like I um I said in the first part of this, like I really only had a job every like I had a different job every year so it's like I kind of remember it based off of which job I had right um so I was working at Chase I was a full-time student at San Jose State it was my last semester year uh, more or less um I was choreographing for three or four cotillions probably at that time I was on Chocolate Factory um <laughs> and we were helping out with Monday Night Workshop. <laughs> so it was like holy like I like once I like literally wrote it down I was like wow, like, how, how did I get into all of this, you know? And I think it was just kind of because you wanted to at the time. And I think it's kind of like a, how do I describe it, like candy, almost, where it's like, I want it now, I want it now. And then at the moment that you realize you had too much, you're like, holy, like, I feel like crap, right? And so I, the main thing for me was that I, lo like, I looked at it as like a big lump sum at one point. I was just like, I have too much-ish going on. But... Um, I think what really saved me, and this might be just, it sounds a little too easy, but like, like buying a planner, like, <laughs> I think it just really saved me just writing it down. Like, what is it? Where can I input some time to like, go hang out with friends? What can I do? And because it was the only way like, like, you know, school was crazy. I needed to find ways to, oh, I was also involved with PCN too. <laughs> like that was the whole thing too. Yeah, so it's like so many practices throughout the week. And so. I, I remember I remember that. There's uh, this one day where we had a chocolate practice, PCN practice, and then a cotillion practice. The, in the same day. In the same day. And yeah. I remember going with you to all three. And, <laughs> yeah, and mind you, some of our cotillion practices at that time were like in Fairfield. It's not, it's not like super close. Yeah. They're like really far. Um, so I think, for me, it was really just organizing it almost. Mm -hmm. Like, just like where, what day, even throughout this whole lump of commitments, can I even just take the time to breathe? And I always found it was like, two, it, you know what's weird? It's like, it's always been Tuesday. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just always been Tuesday, uh -huh. like for seven years now. But like, Tuesday has always been my kind of like, my, my chill day and stuff. And it just kind of um, rolled with that. But I think it was, it was just organizing it and realizing that even though it's so much stuff, like it's not how many hours are in the week, 24 times seven, right? Like it's not every single hour of the week. Like there, you can find the time and stuff. And I think it's really just finding, I kind of made this like pie chart almost um, of like, of like, this is the number of hours in the week. This is the number of hours I'm doing with uh, cotillions. This is the number of hours I'm doing with PCN, with work, with everything, and just kind of seeing what is even feasible because at that point like um you're able to kind of organize how much you can actually take on you know like you can't it's not always just going to be a yes 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 all the time even including like work it's like can you come in it's like i really can't like mm -hmm. you know i already put in my at the time 25 to 30 hours mm -hmm. that week i was like i can't come in to cover mm -hmm. um because i'm in fairfield you know <laughs> like it's like it's it's all of that so i think it takes practice. I think what happened was that I've done it so much now at that point that it was like, it became the new normal that I'm, I'm busy. Like mm -hmm. I'm just accepting that I, I'm busy and it became easier mm -hmm. as I practiced it week after week after week. And then from there, I'm able to actually even take on a little bit more. I mean, I feel like I'm <clears> right <throat> now I'm in around the same boat, mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm just better at it now, mm -hmm. you know? So gotcha. it's like, it takes practice. Mm -hmm. I feel you um, on that as far as organizing I'm pretty much the same I was pretty experiencing the same pretty much the same thing as Kevin at the oh, time yeah. um, actually when I was at SJSU I worked as a, a student counselor so my part time was working at school which helped a lot honestly and so part of my duties was to help um, underclassmen to with their time management that was like 
my job. So then, in order to do that, I had to be good at my <laughs> own time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it was honestly, it still is my favorite job because I learned so much in our training course. Like it, we learned about t- um, time management, like self care, study skills, all these things that I, I'm still carrying today. And um, I noticed that what the, the thing is with the planner, like we break it down (laughs) no basically is i think what helps and not even if if people are not everyone is a write it down person some people are like google calendar iphone calendar some people are just make a list you know what i mean but just being just acknowledging what you can do at certain times and just focusing on one thing at a time helps with your stress because um when you're when you don't organize yourself and you're like okay i have to do this 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 and this this that's very stressful because your brain is thinking at this moment i have to do what 10 12 things when you organize it and you pick a time and like at this time i'm gonna focus on studying this time i'm gonna dance whatever then your brain is just i'm just gonna focus on this because i know when i'm gonna focus on everything else i've set aside that time you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so it helps with stress um obviously practice and stuff i was gonna say also my my greatest time management personal struggle was when we first opened the studio until pretty much now and i'm still practicing at it um so like i had a full-time job i had to work at the studio at the time i was still in chocolate factory i was still doing cotillions and all that stuff and um we were doing yeah so i decided one day like you know what this is my last year for chocolate factory like my my values change and so that i'm gonna take a break as a dancer and become a business person <laughs> you know what I mean and so yeah. and to me it was like you know dance will be there because have the studio you know what I mean I'll I'll like cut back for now and then it'll be, it'll be there whenever I'm ready once the studio settles in you know what I mean like balancing everything and then I'll come back to it um yeah because it was really hard to do everything like I noticed my work for the studio started like diminishing and then if I focus on that then like my performance in chocolate factory was like also you know the only thing that didn't struggle is work i actually know it did because i stressed out at work a lot because of everything so i'm pretty sure everything was getting affected because you had too much on your plate so that's when i decided to to take one out and like create more breathing room for me so that i can put more quality in the stuff that i'm doing yeah so that was probably a time for me where i struggled the most um i mean how do you guys decide when to stop dancing you know what I mean? Oh. Like, obviously we haven't <laughs> decided that, but like, you know, how, how does that work? <laughs> I know. I think we've all like... Contemplated on it. Contemplated <laughs> about it, at least at this point, right? Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, we always say this, like the, like Vivian's like the goals, life goals, you know, yeah, like, yeah, you, know, she, you, know getting, you know, she trains a lot, a she lot does. more than us now. And she's... I don't, I don't know how she is, but she's, you know, obviously a lot, a lot more years on us. So, um, do we have to stop dancing is the question, you know, like, yeah. but I've definitely thought about it. Um, especially when the studio opened, because it's like, it's kind of weird. Cause it's like, you would think, oh no, I can dance forever. Right. <laughs> but like, at one point you got to like, realize like where your priorities are, I guess. And I feel like the decision process really comes with, um, what is, for me, weirdly, is like, what is giving you joy? Is it still making you, is it still like does adding value to your, yeah, does it spark <laughs> joy? Or do you like Marie Kondo it? <laughs> you know, exactly. like, so I think, I mean, but like uh, the big theme right now is like organization, right? Like, does it fit into like what you want to do, right? If you want to do it and if you're trying everything possible to like still fit it in, that that's probably a good sign that it's still probably something you want to keep in your life, you know? So... If, if it's like, no, nah, I'm going to work out, but instead of dance, no, nah, I'm going to go to work instead of dance. I don't know, whatever. Um, then maybe that's a point where it, I feel like it might not even be a black and white. Like, this is my it's last class ever. It's very gray area. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, you never just sit down and be like, I'm done. Yeah. You know, it kind of just slowly happens yeah. sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the same way when you're bringing up Vivian is, to me, it's never about a question of when do I stop dance. I think the way I see it is... If I am done with dance, if I am ready to leave dance, I won't even ask myself that question. It will just happen organically. Mm -hmm. I think if I ever feel an urge to dance, then, you know, I will naturally find the time to kind of scratch that itch. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then I think the main question really is how do you start taking a step back to allow for other things into your life mm -hmm. besides dance? Um, and I think it's all about reevaluating, as I said earlier, why you dance, why you do it, what kind of fulfillment does it bring, and why is it in the space of everything that you, everything else that you do? You know, um, yeah, I don't know. For me, I think the like like I said to kind of reiterate is if I think I'm done with dance, if I feel like it doesn't bring me the same fulfillment that it used to bring, it wouldn't be a difficult decision, you know? And mm -hmm. I think if it's a difficult decision for whoever it may be, it means that you're not necessarily done right. for dance. And I don't think it's necessarily healthy to completely cut it out of your life. However, if you do feel like it's becoming detrimental to succeeding in other areas, maybe you reevaluate about how you can still have dance without having it consume you. Right. But I think it's unhealthy to completely toss it away and quit cold turkey just right. because you think you need to focus on other things. Totally yeah. agree. Um, I had a part-time job one time and then I had so much time to do what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then the minute or like when I finally switched back again to full-time, I was like, what am I gonna do? I can't take class anymore. I remember thinking that and I was like, you know, maybe I can't take five classes a week like I used to, maybe I'll just take one a week, yeah. you know, like kind of take smaller bites instead of like, here's the pie, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like I think I definitely agree with what you said. It's um, at the end of the day, the way you measure your, or like how you spend your time is based on your values. So like, what are you mm -hmm. valuing at the moment? Mm -hmm. Is it your fitness? Is it your academics? Is it your family, your relationship? You know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, just cause you're taking a break from dance, does it mean you're done? or that you're less of a like dancer or good dancer because you're focusing on other things you know what i mean like mm -hmm. really everyone has different values it's individually unique right yeah so so which begs the next question how do you support someone else struggling with you know um time management and dance life balance and i think um i see a lot of this in like the younger like people younger than us oh, like yeah. people who are still in college you know what I mean? We've been through that. <laughs> yeah, like, been through we've that. all been through it. And you're not alone. Like, have people like come up to you and ask for advice? Like, hey, like, how do I deal with this? You know, <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you, how, what have you said to that person? Yeah, um, I definitely, I kind of almost weirdly, straight up did what I did. <laughs> you know, make a list, do the pie chart thing. It was kind of interesting because I knew that it worked for me, so I was just like. Let me here's help you what out. Works for me. Yeah. yeah, here's what works for me. And if you're not, if you don't adapt it fully, um, that's fine. I think it was someone who was debating about if if Chocolate Factory was still possible within their timeline. And I was like, okay, well, what are your priorities? What are you actually going to do? Um, and so I found that, like, you know, this person actually had like a lot of time, you know, um, to do a lot of things and stuff, but I think it was just maybe the capacity of their mental. Um, so it's like that relationship and knowing who you what are and what you this. can handle. Like yeah, that's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. Cause for me, sometimes two hours a day is fine for just like resting. That's mm -hmm. all I need. But some people need like More a whole that. day sometimes just to like recuperate. Um, and so it's hard to give that one piece Cookie of advice. advice. Yeah, I but I think it's like guiding them in the right way of thinking, thinking um is the best way to um guide someone through, <laughs> through the whole process yeah. you know yeah i like that yeah you kind of make them um you probe them with questions probe them yes <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> probing questions <laughs> what about you richard like if you haven't given someone advice already, what is oh, your advice? Oh, no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Turn to Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fully agree with Kevin. Um, I do think a lot of it is understanding yourself and realizing how much time you take to do something to accomplish a task, also factoring in how much time you take to kind of be aloof or need to rest and really understanding yourself in that sense. I think something that also helps is if you feel like you are having a hard time multitasking, I feel like sometimes it might help to reevaluate why you're doing the things you're doing. And what I mean by that is to really understand the why. Mm -hmm. I find that people tend to overwhelm themselves doing things that they think they should be doing. But when you sit down and ask them, why are you doing that? It's more like a, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel obligated to do it, but it doesn't necessarily 
bring me any joy, you know, mm-hmm. or anything like that. And so I think if you ask yourself the why, it becomes easier to start prioritizing what is important to you. Mm-hmm. And once you're able to do that, and once you're maybe able to, as a result, filter out things that don't bring you joy, you will have more time, which will make multitasking a lot easier. Mm-hmm. And not only a lot easier, but I think a lot more fulfilling as well, because then you also give yourself ample time to rest and all that stuff. Um, and another thing that I like to tell people is that dance, barring health, like assuming that you are healthy, dance will always be here. Right. Um, and I know people have concerns about, well, everyone's gonna improve much faster and by the time I come back, I'm gonna suck. But you know what? You know, it might, but your mental will be much better, Worse. you know? And I think there will be a lot of... <laughs> 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 no, what I meant was like taking time to grow outside of dance too, I think is helpful in your mental as well. And I think if you want to improve, you will improve. And if you if that's what you want to do, you will improve at a much faster rate anyways. And to all the dancers that are afraid to venture out, I promise you that when you do, you will see that the world is much bigger than dance. And some of you might actually start realizing that you have other passions. You've just never had the opportunity to allow yourself to think that you might have another passion, mm-hmm. you know? Mm. In so. one way, it can help you grow in dance too. Like that I too. remember when yeah. I took a break, I really appreciated dance when I came back. Like oh, yeah. it gave me that perspective. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you gotta step away yeah. to kind of realize that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, I would say on top of everything with what you guys have been saying, like organization, is you finding out your why. Deeper into that, like, yeah, like what are your values basically? What are you valuing at the moment? You know, know yourself, like so, it's different for everybody. Some people like to work out in the morning. Some people like to work out at night. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that you should, you're a 5 a.m. or you're doing your workouts then. You know, maybe you're a nighttime worker. So um, even with studying, you know what I mean? Like some people like to study when the daylight is out. Some people mm-hmm. like to study at night. So it's really just trying to fit, find what fits for you and how you want to balance your time and also realizing what do you want to value at this moment and being okay and kind of having that faith like dance will be there right like it will and if it's not we're gonna make it (laughs) (laughs) we're gonna make sure it's there and it's it's like having that trust um also like simplifying things like it's not don't don't over complicate everything it's like enjoy life (laughs) be present with what you're doing make sure you're really enjoying what you're doing with your life Mm. otherwise you're just being miserable (laughs) you know what I mean like you want to do what you want um so if you guys don't have any more thoughts with that let's answer some questions there's actually a lot here that I think can spark some conversations all right let's do it so um well this was actually regarding part one how do you balance your love life when you dance all the time (laughs) (laughs) You don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. <laughs> Honestly, like I feel like it, it was one of those like work on yourself sort of things first. Like I feel like dance is such a part of me that if like that part is like satiated, like if I'm like, okay, cool, I'm happy with what I've done with dance right now, like I think it became more of a priority for, at least for me re- more recently, I don't say love life, but like just like getting myself out there and stuff, cause why not, you know, like I feel like I'm in a good spot. Mm-hmm. Um, so no it's forcing you, you know, it's really what you want. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. So it, for me, it's phases, right? Like for a long time, I was just like, nope, I'm gonna focus on my dance. I'm just gonna like do my, do me and stuff. And then more recently that changed, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but yeah. yeah. What about you, Richard? I think with love life, it it depends on which stage you're talking about. Mm. Let's say that you are currently in a relationship already. I think a lot of it has to do with trust between you and your partner, meaning that you might not get to see each other every day because so-and-so wants to go dance. And to that, to them, that is very important. I think establishing the trust between the partner to understand that, hey, it's not so much that I don't want to be around you, but it's because I have this thing that I need to do. And once you have that trust, you can start making workarounds about how, how about we see each other you know, once or twice a week or we video chat or something to make it work as opposed to forcing that person into this box of what 
you want them to do to make this relationship work. It's about kind of being flexible with each other and finding that compromise. I think if you are the person that is not currently in a relationship but is seeking one, we touched upon this earlier, I think it's about just being yourself and I think it will naturally happen. Of course, that's easier said than done. Sometimes you need to go out and actually date and try mm-hmm. to meet people. Um, I think with that, it's no different than trying to balance dance and work or something right. like that. It's to make the time, set aside the time where you will actually take that day to not dance, but to do something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. I don't feel like I have anything more to say. <laughs> uh, like for me, I actually have a long, not really long distance relationship, but it's like an hour away, which can still cut into my time since mm-hmm. I have work and then studio and then dance. So we found a compromise um, that works for us and he has his own passions too. So like kind of worked out um, that we have our own time to to ourselves and then our time together. The thing is when we are together, it's super quality time. So like we don't have our phones out, like you know i don't think anything like we were totally like in the quality moment. yeah in the moment and and that's something we discussed also like you know since we don't see each other so much this is the only time we have let's make the effort to actually have quality time yeah, yeah. so i think it's just really how you you and it's also different between the people you know like different mm-hmm. relationships some Need people yeah exactly yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> next question so how do you keep up with your outside top priorities when you're also on a competitive dance team i.e full-time job school work so what i will say is having been on both the full-time job and the school part of it with full-time jobs it does feel a little bit easier Meaning that because your hours as a full-time employee are typically set, you can very much plan ahead and figure mm-hmm. out what, how you want to fit dance into your life. Now, it's tough being on a team because sometimes those rehearsals run late and it can cause you to lose sleep. Um, I think a lot of it is either deciding if it's okay with you and you want to make that sacrifice, or if you want to try to communicate that with your director and to kind of go from there. But I think it's one of, one or the other. Making sure that you're okay with it or communication right I think on the flip side of it with school it's really tough because with school you might not be in the classroom but in your head you're like ah I definitely should be doing some school related stuff right now Mm -hmm. um that one's really tough I don't know do you want to weigh in (laughs) oh man I mean for me like I'm just coming from more of the leadership position and stuff I think as as directors we kind of need to just be a little bit more sensitive to that um i never personally run our rehearsals past i think the latest that i've ever gone is like 12 30 and stuff because it's like i know most of my team is is either full-time employees or full-time school school right i think i only have like five full-time school or something like that mm-hmm. i don't know but most of them are full-time employees so i have to be really cautious about that but i think uh communication is the word i think that's the big thing because it's like we all understand i think as directors we understand like the other commitments that dance i mean maybe for some people is going to be their future and their career and things like that but if you need to get stuff done then get it done because i think i would only want you at the rehearsal anyway if you are there fully there you know so um don't feel that guilty and if your director makes you feel guilty then maybe that's a conversation you need to have with them um but overall like for us i think it, it really is it boils just down to communication um and then just kind of I think when you audition for the team, though, you're kind of already thinking about that, right? right? Like maybe go think that. about it prior to even joining the team. Like, do I have the time to input X amount of hours in a week, plus potentially working on my like practicing on my own um, right. for like two more hours or whatever? So, yeah, just think, ask those questions prior to that, so that it kind of minimizes the potential stress that could happen mm-hmm. later on. And I think also. With the communication thing, a lot of it is also don't necessarily abuse right. your director's goodwill. Mm-hmm. Don't try to <laughs> don't try to make it a regular thing, as in like, oh, every single practice I need to leave one hour early. Like, try to get your stuff done as much as you can outside of it. Yep. Um, but also communicate if you really do need that occasional like one or two hours or even the whole rehearsal off. Yeah. yeah. So finding totally. that balance between like not abusing it, but while also catering to your own needs. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, I agree with you both. I think um, 
definitely with the part where like before you start maybe think about like is this something i can commit to you know what i mean um if so if you want to do both school and competitive am i going to be okay with sacrificing something else in my life because you're going to have to make sacrifices especially with school you know well for me when i was in school again i was a peer counselor so i made myself a time management schedule so i literally visualized what my time looks like and then i set aside time to study i made sure i had enough time to do homework and study and also enough time to dance and like basically enough of everything (laughs) um and then that just helped me not stress about how much stuff i was doing and again i was saying earlier like made me focus about what i was doing at the moment because i know i have i set aside the time to study on another day already yeah so i'm not gonna worry um and then also yeah like um Sometimes you just gotta, in a period of life, you gotta like, no pain, no gain. <laughs> like you gotta work, yeah. you know what I mean? Passion means to suffer, like you gotta suffer. and um, But it's all worth it. <laughs> yeah. It's all worth it. And um, that's to say, like to add on, if it doesn't feel like it's worth it, reevaluate and ask yourself why you're doing all the things that you're doing. Because totally. if you feel like you're killing yourself over doing everything, maybe there's something there that you don't quite actually want to do. You know? Correct. So, yeah. so um, I have one more question, if you guys don't mind. What are things that dance has taught you that school never could? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're, I can, I can start to give you guys some time to yeah, think. Yeah. I definitely learned like problem solving. You know what I mean? Like conflict resolution um, in dance, like especially when I work with organizations and stuff, like I learned how to talk to people, how to deal with different types of personalities. Um, You know, dance teams are huge. Sometimes like you don't get along with everyone Mm -hmm. and you kind of have to be a good teammate still, you know, I learned that. I also learned kind of like how to, I guess, like struggle (laughs) and like just kind (laughs) of, I learned very like, I learned how to maintain my like faith and like hope and stuff because when you're around like-minded people you find your support system and so like everything just is so worth it if Mm -hmm. that makes sense and i don't think i learned that in school (laughs) because i didn't do sports i think that's something you may learn in sports teams and stuff but i didn't do sports (laughs) oh yeah i think yeah i think that's um kind of to bounce off of that i didn't really do sports in (laughs) high school either um but I think it really is the subtle, the subtlety of like the payoff of your hard work. Like Mm -hmm. that's like for me, like a lot of limitation, like or limitations that you put on yourself is really just up in your head. Um, So that's I feel like what dance has taught me. It really is just that like you don't really have like, I mean, of of course, barring um, health stuff, but like you don't really have anything that's holding you back. Like it really is just, you know your solution and you just have to be able to like execute it and follow through. That's deep. That's, that's <laughs> something that I feel like I, dance has really taught me in the grand scheme, scheme of life, you know? Yeah. For me, I think the biggest lesson that dance taught me was to not, how to not compare myself to mm. other people. Um, mm. It taught me how to kind of ask myself, why am I seeking validation in certain things? Why do I care about these likes on Instagram and stuff like that? I feel like no other profession will really make you dig deep because no other thing is as soul crushing as dance can be sometimes <laughs> because you can really get down yeah, sometimes yeah. because of that. And so it really taught me not to compare myself to others. I yeah. feel that. Mm-hmm. I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think um, dance is very, such a great thing in our lives. You know, it taught us so many things. And um, really good life lessons. I, that's why we have the studio, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, we reached the end of our episode. I hope that today's topic opens up people's perspective perspective on time management and balance, and how you guys can deal with your own struggles at the moment. I personally love this topic, like because I used to again work as a time management counselor. Mm-hmm. Um, so hit me up if you have questions. <laughs> I love helping people figure stuff out. So thank you for listening, audience, watching, and supporting us. Follow us on YouTube um, and Spotify and Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> so you don't miss out on the goodies. Um, and then of course, thank you, Richard and Kevin, for being here today. This was a really sincere um, conversation. Thank you to the production team for this platform and all that you do. And I'm Donita. This is Richard and Kevin. 
This is Between Us Foods. We'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>